Hi, welcome to the ADNA Presents. Today, before we present our special guest, I'd like to share with you a reminder that on Kindle, the ADNA Presents has volume one of interviews that have been happening here in the podcast of Voice Talents. It's now available on Kindle. Go to the ADNA Presents. You'll find volume one available for you. And secondly, because of a last minute job that came up, I had to get to the destination before I was able to record this interview. So you're going to hear some really horrible audio from my side, but thankfully Slaw makes up for it. I think you're really going to enjoy this podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the ADNA Presents. Today we have a very special guest, Slaw Halliton. He is a audio magician. He's a mix wizard and uh, audio engineer and producer. He's a studio owner in New York City. Thanks so much for joining us, Slaw. Oh, thank you so much, Roy. It's a pleasure to be here. What do you love about audio description? Aside from the obvious, uh, as a blind consumer, to to be able to really get the the full picture, uh, so to speak, what I love about it is that my wife, who is fully sighted, now watches programs without me with audio description <laughs> because it's just you know because you know in the dark in the dark ages when uh, she would have to describe on the fly. Uh, stuff. I mean, it was, we all know the challenges that that poses because, you, you know, you're, you're trying to watch, you're trying to understand, you're trying to concisely describe, you're trying to remember characters' names, like all of that stuff compounds upon itself. And uh, the great thing is that uh, when when we're watching something together, uh, I mean, it really helps her to follow the storyline, uh, to remember the character names and stuff like that. So I think that that to me is like the biggest plus of all with audio description. Oh, very cool. Great to hear. And you identified yourself as a consumer of audio description. You're also a professional. Could you uh, address some of the uh, the intersections there as far as your uh, your work in uh, in audio? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, as uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, I am a blind audio engineer. I I was sighted, you know, up until I was in college, uh, and then I I lost vision because of uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, it was a very slow progression, but it, it did affect me in terms of being able to do the college work I needed to do. I was originally enrolled in an industrial design program, so it was a highly visual thing. But I always had a passion for audio, uh, always was a, a musician and, and a, a, a studio, like a session player and stuff. Uh, but I never considered that a full time uh, career. Uh, I never considered it as a possibility. Well, then after. Uh, after a period of time where I could not do any real industrial design work, uh, I decided to go back to school for audio engineering. And uh, I still had enough vision to be able to, you know, with with some adaptive technology, uh, you know, get through all of my course material and stuff like that. And even if I had to, say, look at a, a VU meter to establish uh, proper recording levels or something. Uh, if I put my nose up against a meter, you know, I could I could make it out, you know. But over time, even that became impossible. Uh, luckily, I was studying around the time when digital audio workstations uh, started becoming a viable option for recording in recording studios, and so I was even trained in that regard. And my, my work primarily focused around music recording. Uh, I ended up doing a lot of orchestral recording and stuff like that. But then it also essentially expanded over to uh, voiceover recording, audio description recording, that kind of thing. And so, you know, I, you know, just like the music world, you know, people ask me whether I can just sit and listen to music and appreciate it for what it is without analyzing it. And I and I must say, it is difficult. It is possible, but it is <laughs> difficult because I sit there and I go, ah, oh, that snare sound. Oh, you know, it's, I, I I wish they would have done this or that or whatever it is. And it's uh -huh. and it's pretty much the same with audio description. Uh, I mean, how could you not? 
sit there and roll your eyes when something is like suddenly ducked so far down that you hear the audio description clearly, but you hear none of the program material behind it. And then suddenly that program material shoots up. It's, it's very distracting, you know? So, um, you know, as a professional, I sit there and I listen, and I go, oh, that's terrible. I wish they did a better job. Or you marvel at the great job that is sometimes done, you know, because I know the challenges. And so, you know, when it is uh, well done, then it's it's really a pleasure. Uh, but then, of course, at the same time, just as a consumer, hey, I, I, I'm happy that we have as much audio description as we do. Uh, but even even there, uh, you know, you, you you get disappointed when, you know, you, you find things that aren't described or partially described or poorly described. Oh, it's it's a it's a never ending uh, <laughs> list, a laundry list of, you know, uh, wishes and, uh, you know, complaints. But anyway. Sure. And I hear the you know, I hear the disappointment, too. There's a, a, one of the things uh that happens in these conversations is that um, it is a form of discrimination that cited people are able to immerse themselves into the story without these these barriers that are put upon our audio description uh, audiences in the sense of, you know, whether it's the assumption of we've got to get this out really fast or we don't have a lot of money or whatever barrier, maybe it's even a, a lack of professionalism, any of those, those things. And what I'm hearing in a uh, a lot of conversations, I'm curious your take on this, is that if we use the analogy of the digital audio workstation as a change in technology that, uh, that gave fewer barriers for you to be able to, to develop your career. Um, and also, uh, I think you had said that uh, you had never considered a career uh, before in audio engineering, but now you could. Those are, that tells me that it's technology and culture that are changing. And I'm getting the sense with over 8,000 titles in, in film and TV specifically that have audio description, that those two things, the career and the technology, or sorry, the, uh, the technology and the culture are changing to accommodate and allow that immersive experience for our audience. Is that a, could you address that if you agree, disagree, or maybe some I, nuance to it? Well, I think that certainly, uh, I mean, we live in a technology driven world, you know, really like every it's all around us, you know, and uh, I mean, I think it's fantastic. It's great. It, it It's one of the things that allows me to do the work that I do. Uh, I mean, back in the analog days, uh, you know, certainly if that's still the way it uh, it worked. I could get by, I could, I could still work, but, uh, you know, given the fact that we're in, we're in a technological, uh, a, a digital technological world, um, so many things can be made more accessible. The trouble is, of course, uh, with the proliferation of such digital technology, uh, you know, there are so many things popping up, uh, so many new things, new technologies. Uh, that that often they are not very accessible, um, or the developers sort of uh, they don't consider uh, the the accessibility of their technologies. Uh, uh, one analogy that somebody once used that I think is great: uh, it's like uh, you know you, you build you build a house, uh, a building, and then somebody says, "Well, you know." you only have staircases what about wheelchair users you know you 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 should have put an elevator in and to to then put an elevator in after the building is built is tremendously difficult and expensive and probably impossible in most cases but had you planned on it to start with it would have been so much easier, would have been less expensive, would have been a little bit more work, but would have been accessible to all. So I find that with technology, we, we have that kind of a situation um, these days. Um, but at least from culturally speaking, from the perspective of awareness, I mean, we do have a lot more awareness these days uh, uh, regarding audio description, for example. I mean, the fact that a lot of programming is out of the gate 
described is fantastic. I mean, it's something that, you know, 20 years ago, I, I, I would have never, it was a dream, you know, at that time, we were just excited to get, you know, a mandate of a few hours of, you know, <laughs> programming. I mean, that's like, you look back and you think, wow, you know, it's so much better. But of course, the, with progress, you realize, well, we have so far to go too, you know. Yeah. And gosh, I knew we'd get the nuance with you. This is great. Thank you for both uh, examples of the uh, the planning, the building, and how much easier it would be and less expensive if you do ahead of time and not the afterthought. Mm -hmm. And uh, true. that awareness thing on the cultural side, this is, this is, uh, this is gold. Uh, is anybody listening? Can we make a, a money quote here? Is that, is that what we're talking about? Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's, say, if I could ask specifically about audio description, you had, you had addressed the, uh, the ducking issue. Uh, uh, most of our audiences in this podcast understand that's, you very clearly shared it too. So uh, we don't have to uh, uh, go over that. Are there, is there something else that you see as uh, when you're analyzing audio description, either as a audience member or a, a professional, that's just like, oh, this is something that it would be so much better if, and then how would you fill in that blank? Um, well, I mean, aside from the, um, aside from that technical issue that, that I think everybody, uh, you know, everybody knows what we're talking about when, you know, when we're talking about, uh, you know, the audio of the program audio dropping out suddenly, uh, you know, to, 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 to an extreme degree. And that's just poor engineering in terms of mixing aside from that. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think, I, I, I don't think f anything else from a technical point of view uh, is a big problem these days. I think that most description, and I'm talking about description that is done like by human voices, nothing, you know, not, not uh, synthesized uh, speech or anything like that, because that, uh, I, 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 I don't approve of at all. Um, I, I think that uh, the, the, the description itself, the quality of the writing, I mean, that, that's always a thing that, you know, it, it's probably more of a personal uh, preference of things. I mean, um, you know, I, I know that there's probably quality control, although there is quality control uh, done by uh, description companies. Um, but I think a, lo a lot of the stuff, you know, is just a superfluous description or... <sighs> Or things like, you know, you get some programs where like the only description you get is in the kitchen and that's it, you know, and, and then the rest okay. of it is like, you have no, I, I mean, I, I you know, at, at that point, it's, it's, um, it's quality of writing. I mean, I, I think that's what it really mostly boils down to. Uh, of course, I, I personally can't stand when when description is written in such a way that the writing uh, sort of addresses the intention of the character and stuff like that, where, uh, you know, I don't, I, I say, don't tell me what you think the character is thinking. Describe their facial expression. You know, tell me what their, their, what their body is doing. I know, you know, what a raised eyebrow means. You know, I can infer just like a sighted person what that means. But don't tell me, don't feed me that if, 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 you know, if, if, uh, if you think I can't understand that, then, then you're, you're sort of, you're describing down to me. <laughs> don't describe down to me. <laughs> I think I'd say it that way. Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, we've also talked even on the voiceover side of that down to me attitude that uh, we've brought up a few times that Netflix and their publicly available quality control requirements for audio description companies. It addresses that narrator who speaks in a sing-songy tone, which sounds like that you're four years old. 
or you know it's like that comes across as condescending and that that down to me can apply obviously as you address to the writing to the uh uh laziness of a mix or even the the voice talent uh mm -hmm. performing in a way that that doesn't work if mm -hmm. um this is great uh if you were to to uh to think about where uh you yourself, your career continue to evolve. Do you see it growing in the, the same trajectory? Do you see uh, jumping ship and going into a different direction? Are you, are you uh, like, what's the, what's the dream scenario for you? If you don't mind me asking, if that's not too personal. The dream scenario is to retire. <laughs> there we go. No, uh, no don't, don't get me wrong. I love what I do. I love what I do. And and I'm excited every day when I get to the studio. Uh and 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 I I will always work in some capacity, uh, you know, in, in audio. My first love is music and I'm a musician, a, a songwriter, a composer. So that's my, that's my first love. And I got into audio to be able to uh, record my own material in demo form, you know, to shop it around that kind of thing. And then the further I got into the world of audio, the more fascinated I got. Um, and it was all, it's all problem solving. I mean, I, I frankly, I think life is just one big problem solving, uh, a continuous series of problem solving sessions. <laughs> because, you know, what's the problem? I got, yeah. I get up, you know, what's the problem? I got to get in better shape. So you get on the treadmill. Uh, <laughs> I'm hungry. That's a problem. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to have to make some lunch. You know, it's all a series <laughs> of problems. How am I going to pay my bills while well, I have to work? Okay. I got into industrial design uh, as as a you know a, a college student. Industrial design, by definition, is just a series of uh, you know uh, tasks, uh, problems to be solved. How do I build a better vacuum cleaner? How do you design a better chair, more more lightweight, more uh, you know stronger? This and that. It's all a series of of, of problems, and it's the same in audio how do i record uh, you know a, a a vocalist playing guitar without having the guitar bleed into the vocal mic too much without the vocal bleeding into the guitar mic too much without having phasing issues uh, the, it's just an endless series of problem solving um so i found that f fascinating and uh you know and i think that i will always continue to uh appreciate the the tasks involved in that um you know i i really ultimately I, I say i said it as a joke but i really do mean it i think the ultimate goal is to retire in the sense of uh, not not necessarily needing to work as an audio engineer full time uh, but more so as a as a composer uh, my wife and i are, have have been working on the on an idea for a musical uh but to do that you really need to devote yourself full time for for years and uh my wife took an early retirement uh and so now i think she's kind of tapping her toe waiting for me <laughs> to retire from my job so that we could work on this uh you know i say that half jokingly uh, she 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 isn't she look she says you know you do what you need to do you know what you know, whatever you want we can work on this whenever but i think i'm at the point where i'm saying uh that yeah i, I i'm going to probably over the course of the next couple of years kind of uh, m more selectively uh, choose the projects I work on so that I can devote more time to composition, to, uh, to writing. Very cool. What a great focus. And uh, to know that you're being compensated for the value that you brought to be able to get to that place of retirement. It's, uh, it's great to know that uh, <laughs> we can all follow that lead as, uh, as needed. Um, Thanks for sharing that and congrats on that. That's very exciting. I can't wait to, can't wait to hear it, watch it, everything. <laughs> so, uh, I know that's going to be down the road, but uh, that'll, that'll hopefully yeah. come soon. Um, I hope so. Anything else you'd like to share with our audience? One thing that was so 
and I don't mean to you know get uh, to to land on a, on a negative here, but it is uh, it is disheartening. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I started watching the first episode, and it really drew us in. And then the second episode, you know, it continued and stuff like that. And the third episode, no description. I thought, huh? That's Oof. weird. We thought, well, okay, well, let's let's see if we, you know, we we tried to access it, you know, a different way, and this and that. And I was so disappointed to see that the rest of the series you know, didn't have description. And I see online discussions, you know, where, uh, you know, the person who described it said, you know, well, actually, yeah, all of the, all of the episodes were described, but for some reason effects only like included two episodes and claimed that only two episodes were contracted for description. I mean, that's just, that's bizarre. Why would they pay for seven episodes? And then only put out two. It just doesn't make sense. So it's disheartening with when things like that happen. But you know, there are a lot more people that are uh, sort of uh, a lot more people around these days that are more vociferous in terms of picking up the phone, the emailing, calling to complain, and and that kind of pressure uh, can sometimes really uh, you know help raise awareness. And then you you sometimes do get results. So hopefully something will happen with uh, with that particular series because I want to watch it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I love that, uh, you know, these are these are systemic changes that are happening, that it's uh, to be in the position of making that phone call and saying, hey, the elevator goes to the first three stories, but doesn't go all the way up. Right, <laughs> so exactly. Now, your analogy here. It's like, that doesn't make yeah. sense. And it's like, right. oh, well, you know, hopefully back to that problem solving, let's let's turn this into a positive. The, the companies that are now at the point of understanding what audio description is, it's like, oh, we've got a breakdown somewhere. We do need to describe the entire series. What yes. happened and how can we prevent that from the future? That That is that is the, the microphone vocal uh, guitar Ism yes. Of audio description. Yes. Yes. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Is there anything? Uh, how can we reach you? Either on uh, following a website, on social media. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I do. I I used to have a podcast, which I keep threatening to revive. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe if I if I do take on a few less clients, maybe I, I will uh, revive that. And that's sessionswithslau.com. So that's sessions with S L A U dot com. I do yeah, I do have a Twitter handle. So I, I I do I'm sort of a little bit more active on Twitter, and that's Slau B Sharp. That's S L A U B E S H A R P. Uh, B Sharp is the name of the studio here in New York City, where where that I own and operate. And uh, yeah, F- F- Slough Hallaton uh, on on Facebook, uh, and that the last name is H A L A T Y N. I'm not big on Facebook, but I'm there, and 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 uh, so I I do kind of keep an eye on Facebook a little bit. How how could you not these days? You have to. And uh, yeah, so the, I think those are the way, oh, you know, and, and, and actually just I'll, I'll mention email in case somebody needs to reach out via email instead of the other, the social media. Uh, and I'll be slough at bsharpstudios.com, B-E-S-H-A-R-P-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com. Perfect. Thanks so much for joining us. Slough. Thank you, Roy. It's been a pleasure.